let's do a little mathematical mix and match here and combine those equations to get EI or to get ER and ET so that we can figure out these reflection and transmission coefficients. Um, so what we're going to do is start with the second one, the one that came from the, uh, the continuity of the tangential component of the magnetic field, and that was that EI cosine theta I minus ER cosine theta I. Uh, what did that equal? That equaled N times EC, uh, ET cosine theta T, the transmitted part. What we're going to do is then N is we're going to plug in from the first one. Instead of ET, we're going to write it in terms of EI and ER. But we'll leave the cosine theta T's, of course. Right. So this will become N EI cosine theta T, uh, and then it's plus N ER cosine theta T. All we did was ex exchange ET for EI plus ER from the continuity of the electric field at the interface. And now we're interested, we're going to start with the reflection coefficient. We want to get ER over EI. So we switch these around and pull out the ERs and the EIs. The E's R and the E's I or the ERs, I'm not sure. EI times, we have cosine theta I here and then minus n times cosine theta t here. And then on the right side, we have er times n cosine theta t there plus cosine theta i there. It would look something like that. So now we can write what one thing we're looking for is little r. The reflection coefficient that we're trying to find, we've solved it just for the TE. Right? We've solved it for the case of a TE wave, because that was TE was when we set up and we wrote out all these uh, tangential components. And that's going to be ER over EI. And let's see, what's that going to come out to? ER over EI is cosine theta I. <laughs> minus n cosine theta t over uh, n cosine theta, uh, let's write it, make it sort of symmetric, cosine theta i plus n cosine theta t. Okay. And if that was the end of the story, people wouldn't hate these equations so much. Okay? Because that's actually almost elegant. That's not so bad. Cosine of the incident angle minus n times the cosine of the transmitted angle over the cosine of the incident angle plus n times the cosine. You know, that's kind of nice. But in optics books and in optics, we often rewrite it so that we have it in terms of all in terms of theta i. And it kind of makes sense. When you're calculating how something's going to reflect off a surface, you don't want to have to first calculate the, the transmission, the refraction, to figure out the reflection. Right? You just want, want to get it straight in terms of the reflection. So we're going to go from theta t to theta i. And that's what makes the expressions kind of ugly. Because the way we get there is Snell's law. And Snell's law is in terms of sines, not cosines. So the first thing we have to do is say that the cosine of theta t equals the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta t. That just uses the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So we turn that around that way, and then we use Snell's law on this sine squared to get it. So then it also equals the square root of 1 minus 1 over n squared sine, ah, sine squared theta i. So there we've used um, Snell's law to get from sine theta t to sine theta i, and the n was on that side, so we had to bring it over to the theta i side. So that's just not real uh, pretty. Um, when we use our cosine theta t, it has an n in front of it. So just to keep going, we'll say that, oh, actually, n cosine theta t means we're going to multiply this thing by n, so we might as well bring the n inside the square root so that it's equal to 
n squared minus sine squared theta i. And because when you bring it in, it's n squared here, and then the n squared there cancels that n squared. So if you get all that done, then you write RTE, the reflection coefficient for TE light incident on a dielectric interface at some thing, uh, angle, some thangle eta, some angle theta is cosine theta, theta i incident, minus the square root of n squared minus sine squared theta i over cosine theta i incident angle plus the square root of n squared minus sine squared theta i. So not quite as pretty as over there. But now we have exactly what happens only in terms of a plane wave hitting an index or hitting a dielectric interface. And the only, really the only parameters are what angle does it come in and what is the index of the dielectric you're going into. If you know those two things, you'll know the ratio. You'll know how much the electric field amplitude will go down. We could do the whole thing again for RTM, but I'm just going to give you the answer. RTM equals n squared cosine theta i minus the square root of n squared minus sine squared theta i over n squared cosine theta i plus the square root of n squared minus sine squared theta i. So that is RTM. I'll let you do that one on your own if you want. It's a very similar situation. You just do it for the different field alignment at the boundary. But all the math is pretty similar. So now we have RTE and RTM. Now we can see what they tell us about the amplitudes of the waves when they reflect.